Church, please stand if you would, and we'll sing together. Turn in your songbook to page number 125. We'll sing Jesus is Coming Again, singing the first and the last verse. Page 125 in your hymnal. Marvelous message we bring. you good singing this morning it almost sounds like you enjoy church that's good I'm so glad you enjoy church you know there's no better place to come at the beginning or uh, you might say well this is the end of the week however you want to view it church is the greatest place to be today I'm just telling you you come together you sing you smile you look like you love God you know in a little bit you'll be able to go around and shake each other's hands and just be able to enjoy each other's fellowship and good company Man, you just can't beat that. That's better than ice cream. I'm going to preach to a mixed multitude this morning. <laughs> Ushers, come if you will. And thank you so much for coming. We're honored you're here. If you are visiting, if you'll just do us a favor, please, all of our guests, if you'll be seated. All of our guest visitors, if you'll be seated. Ushers are going to come. They're going to place a visitor's card in your hand. And if you can fill that out in its entirety, place it in the offering plate as it does go by in just a little bit, we would appreciate that immensely. And thank you so much for coming. It's good to see the Maskey family with us. Dear friends, longtime friends, serving, of course, the Lord there in Nigeria. Uh, they'll be showing uh, an update on their ministry tonight, and that is great. And uh, Austin, right? Is it Austin? Justin. Justin Austin. No, I'm just kidding. Justin's here today with them. That's great, and we appreciate it. How old are you, Justin? 17. He's looking for a wife, if you have <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But we're glad you're here with Mom and Dad. That is so good. All right, let's pray together. Brother Butler, you lead us as we pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, thank you for our Sunday school classes, Lord, that we were part of this morning. What a blessing of the fellowship and the good time together. Lord, as we begin the morning service, I pray, Lord, that you will uh, have a free reign here, Lord. I pray that uh, you'll bless the music, speak to our hearts. Lord, I pray if there's things on our minds, Lord, about just uh, this past week, life, Lord, uh, finances, bills, all those things, Lord, so many things can take our mind away from the things that we need to pay attention to, which is the Word of God. I pray here in a little bit as preacher preaches that you will open our hearts and our minds and help us, Lord, to receive what you have for us. Lord, I pray for those that are not saved, that today they will come to know Christ as their Savior. And uh, Lord, I pray that you'll bless our visitors. Thank you for them being here in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> oh, 
Looking back through the years, the heartaches and tears, my Lord has never once let me down. Though I don't understand, still I'll trust in His plan, for He said, that his grace would abound. No need to doubt him now. He'll make a way somehow. Safely this far, Jesus has brought me no need to doubt him now child of god have no fear though your path seems unclear someday God's plan will unfold. He has never, never failed, and he will always prevail. For the Lord is still in control. No need to doubt him now. Somehow, safely this far, Jesus has brought me. No need to doubt him now. Safely this far, Jesus has brought me. No need to doubt him now. No need to doubt him now. All right, good job, John. I appreciate that. Thank the Lord yesterday. Uh, we have, of course, uh, Saturday ministries as well. And boy, I thank the Lord for the good number coming out soul winning. We're up around 200 almost coming out. And I, I appreciate you so very much. That's including the, the uh, Tuesday night crowd, Thursday night crowd, and Saturday. And uh, what a blessing it is to be able to go out and share the gospel and have people to understand their need of Christ. And so you're doing a great job. Appreciate that so very, very much. And to see Bible clubs yesterday, they had 98 that was in attendance and 13 people receiving Christ. Uh, Chapel on Wheels, 22 uh, in attendance, two receiving Christ. We have two public school Bible clubs that we run during the week. We're on uh, Bible club property. The campus is there and running the clubs. And uh, we thank the Lord for 51 in attendance in these two clubs and one receiving Christ as Savior. Pray for Brother Denton Bell. He is preaching in San Antonio at a missions conference. And so if you'll pray for him as he is out. And then Jonathan Wells is preaching in Napa, Napa, California. And so if you'll pray for these two young men as they're out preaching today, I know they would appreciate that. We have been trying to accommodate in a wonderful way. And I appreciate Mrs. Shipline, Brother Shipline, all that they do in helping with the orchestra and in all the other areas of life. I, I got the No Brother Ship line, I think it's about three years before he, he actually moved right here and joined our church, but we've been praying over the years, and God moved him here, and, and of course then uh, Mrs. Shipline has been a director of many different orchestras and whatnot, and she has really uh, taken the lead in helping our orchestra to grow, and we appreciate that so very, very much, and so uh, with the expansion of the orchestra and with, of course, uh, people wanting to 
to join. Uh, we, we first we'd call it a pit. Uh, we we're going to call it the orchestra pit. But then somebody came to me and said, does that mean that we're going to stick dynamite in the ground and just kind of like blow out a hole? And I thought, that's a great idea. We could probably do that. I mean, you know, and that way we could actually go down. They could go down into the pit. But uh, we're not going to do that. But we are going to. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, you'll see that this area over here, these three pews, is going to become the orchestra area. And, uh, and so uh, all the orchestra will move that way. That way we can expand the choir as well. And so we're excited about that. You pray for that upcoming uh, transition, if you would. And that will put all the orchestra in one place. And uh, we've been studying on it now for well, a couple of months about what to do, and so uh, now we've come to the best conclusion for that, and so we're excited about that. Hey, you don't want to miss the Sunday uh, evening services. Of course, uh, tonight I'll be preaching about why it's important to love the church of God, and so you'll, you'll enjoy the message tonight. It has to do with, of course, the advantages of being in a local church such as we have right here, and that is going to be a tremendous blessing. If you'd like to help out, uh, you can sign up at guest services right out here, and that would be for helping out in the state fair. We have several that's gone down to the state fair and work in the soul winning booth there with Amazing Grace Missions, and uh, there's been many that's received Christ as Savior already, many gospel tracts being handed out. If you can help out with that, that would be great. Brother Owens has a new book that's out. It's called God's Perspective on Man's Emotions. Uh, spiritual instructions uh, and, and uh, concerning emotions. And so you, you don't want to miss that, okay? Deal with emotions, and that's good. This is great, too. Uh, you know, here it is. Almost Thanksgiving. It's coming up. Christmas coming up. Holiday cooking is now right around the corner. You say, I'd like to learn how to cook. Here it is right here. Here's a cookbook. Here's a cookbook. Every man, every lady, every child, every... Yeah, just go by the bookstore. Lots of good stuff that's in there. You can learn how to cook. Uh, by the way, you, you could buy this secretively, put it in your kitchen, all of a sudden cook, and then your husband walks in and says, Wow, I didn't know, how, I, I didn't know you knew how to do that. You know, and so revolutionary stuff right there. And so if you'd like to be able to get that, you can get that down there. That would be neat also. Well, if you brought a guest this morning, you'd like to introduce your guest. Would you stand, please? You brought a guest this morning. You'd like to introduce your guest. I see many visitors that are here, so we thank God for each person uh, that is here. Okay, right back here. Yes. Uh, That's great. Good to see you all again. God bless you. Thank you so very, very much. Okay. And the choir right here. Yes. Behind the butler said we have a Monica. Um, I think Sonia invited her a couple of weeks ago and she uh, stopped the bus and on stage. So okay. Then, Good. Uh, to where we sit in front of, um, uh, anyway, right, right here we have uh, Kevin and Cynthia. And they wrote okay. this on stage. Good. God bless you folks. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Jared. Uh, Casey's been kind. Uh, she brought her husband, Jesse, today. That's great. God bless you. All right, right here. Um, the back row in front of brother, uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I do that sometimes, too. That's okay. Uh, he used to ride the bus when he was a kid, but it's cash money. He came last week as well, um, but this is the second week back. Okay, good, good. That's super. All right, good. All right, yes, ma'am. Yeah, God bless you folks. Thank you for coming too. Good. Anybody else have a guest you want to introduce? All right. I don't want to miss anybody. Okay. Good. Super. All right. Let's give our guest a big round of applause. Let's sing once again. You may remain seated, but turn to page number 551. 551. And we'll sing He Came to Me. Sing both verses. Page 551.
Would you stand with us and sing once again and turn in your songbook to page number 234. 234, we'll stand and sing, Meet Me There, page number 234. Amen. and also grandparents visiting today that is a part of our Bible Club ministry in the public schools, and we appreciate you being here. It's an honor to work with your children uh, in the public school and teaching the Bible, and so appreciate what God is doing with our young people, helping out with that, and you being here today. Okay, God bless you. I'll tell you what, Dr. Bachman, you'll come lead us in prayer in just a minute. Let's be careful to remember all the, the good things that God has done for us you know, from that which is the financial way and be able to tithe and be able to give an offering. I do say again, thank you so much for the special offering you gave to be able to renovate these two bathrooms over here. And I just appreciate that so much. I do have to ask a question, though. Has anybody noticed that there's a screen that's out today? Have you noticed that? I was just wondering if anybody noticed, you know. And so, but uh, yeah, it went out, ye it went out uh, yesterday or day before yesterday, and they're trying to get it replaced. And so, uh, we apologize for that, and so if you, you just, just, I just wanted to make sure you didn't think you were going blind in one eye or something, you know, and so that'd be bad. If you're visiting, take your visitor's card, place it in the offering plate as it does go by. We would appreciate that also. Uh, Dr. Bachman, come lead us as we pray. 
Lord, we do thank you for the joy of being able to come together on a Sunday. It's just a place of refreshment, God, after being out all week and uh, dealing with the things of the world, just to be able to come around your people and sing the songs of Zion, hear your word preached. Just kind of a little refuge for us part way. God, I pray that you'll bless now as we uh, listen to the preaching today. May it stir our hearts and be willing to uh, make changes in our lives that we need to do. God, I pray that you also bless our tithes and our offerings, certainly our missions giving as we try to help get the gospel to the Dallas metro area as well as around the world. Thank you for each person that follows you and is obedient to you in their finances. And God, I pray that you bless uh, every dime that comes in so that, God, many things can be accomplished for you in the days that we have here in this world. We'll give you the thanks for it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Don't forget, as always, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, we have several different things that happen all across the campus here. We have something for every age group, whether it be first through sixth grade, teenagers, adult discipleship, choir, orchestra, all kinds of things that happen at 5 o'clock here, and then our evening service at 6 o'clock. So come early, get involved in one of these extra groups at 5, and then our evening service at 6 o'clock. Tuesday this week, uh, both the academy and the college and church offices will all be closed. It's State Fair Day, and uh, we take everybody to go enjoy the State Fair together, uh, load up on cholesterol and grease and uh, all kinds of things to help us survive another year. And so uh, don't forget, if you have students in the college or in the academy, uh, or you're trying to contact some in the church offices, uh, just come down to the State Fair. You'll find us down there. Uh, Wednesday, uh, before the service at 6 p.m., we have our our calm care after loss ministry and uh, you might want to come and participate in that just some good bible principles about how to deal with the loss of a loved one uh, or help someone else who's lost a loved one and so that's a great ministry we have on wednesdays at six 
6.30 is teen choir practice, and then at 7 o'clock, our Bible study here in the main auditorium, as well as our patch club and peewee club. They meet here in the auditorium initially, and then we'll dismiss them out, and a great program for the kids on Wednesday nights as well. This Friday, our Academy uh, Sports League will be playing games in Center, Texas, both the volleyball and the basketball teams. Uh, both of them played this Friday here locally and uh, won both of their games, and so you can uh, cheer them on, and again, that's in Center, Texas this Friday. Our Spanish Family Conference will start this Friday at 7 o'clock and run on uh, Friday and Saturday. And we have a large Spanish department that meets over in the next building upstairs uh, every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, Wednesday night. They have their own uh, Sunday school ministry, their own children's church ministry and bus routes and so forth. But every year they host a family conference for many Spanish-speaking people uh, from other churches. And so that will begin this Friday at 7 o'clock. Don't forget on Saturday, 9.30 our bus meeting, 10 o'clock right here in the auditorium our church-wide soul winning rally. And a good group that's been coming out the last several weeks to help us to go out in the neighborhoods, invite folks to church, and tell them about Christ. And so you might want to come and join us for that at 10 o'clock. And then also at 12.30, the chapel on wheels will be doing a baptism service here on campus. And uh, they've been doing that about once a month, and so you pray for them as they bring a group in. Don't forget our annual ladies' conference, a walk on the beach, will be taking place on Friday and Saturday, October 14th and the 15th. This is for all young ladies, third grade and up. And again, our guest speakers, Mrs. Buchanan and Miss Amy Sapp. You can register online or you can come out here uh, to the guest service area and register out there. But we'd encourage you ladies to come and be a part of that. And you certainly will enjoy and learn some things. Also during that time frame, we allow our church ladies to set up a vendor or a craft table. If you have some things that you'd like to sell, maybe you some home baked goods or some craft items, a child or two, whatever you want to get rid of, you can set up a table out here and to sell those things at the ladies conference and let somebody else have your problems just a reminder for couples if you're wanting to attend the couples retreat forever fiesta that's in november the cost is 200 dollars. the deadline to sign up for that is october 9th that's next sunday again out here at guest services a good place you can take care of that there's more information for you out there and if you've not yet signed up you have one more week to do so and you'll enjoy that good uh, activity on october uh, the, the last of October there. October uh, 13th is a homeschooler field trip to the Fort Worth Zoo, and uh, they'll leave the church at 8.30 in the morning. Students is $8, adults is $15. And again, if you're wanting to go on that, you have homeschoolers and you'd like to go on the homeschool activity, you can sign up out here as well at guest services. And uh, by next Sunday is when you need to have that signed up for. And again, Thursday, October the 13th is the activity. And then, fellas, don't forget, uh, just like we have a ladies' conference every year, we have something for the men as well, and that is our annual men and boys camp out. And the dates for that are October the 28th through the 29th, and we'll be going to Purtis Creek State Park. And again, stop out here at guest services. All the sign-up sheets, all the information is located out there. But this is just a great time of fun and fellowship that we have, and you can do it however you want. If you want to come and rough it and sleep on the ground with no tent and no pillow, uh, you can do that. If you want to stay in a camper uh, that you bring or uh, in your vehicle, however you want to do it. But we just have a great time of food and fellowship and some teaching from the Word of God. And and just a good time to spend together. And so again, the t dates on that are October 28th through the 29th. Cost is $12 per person. Again, stop out here at Guest Services and you can sign up there. <clears throat> Please turn in your song books once again to page number 59. Page 59, remain seated as we sing. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. We'll sing the first verse only. Page number 59.
in Kentucky, up in the hills of Kentucky, they have what they call men on the mountain. And these are guys that bring their four-wheelers and their pickup trucks, and they come and they gather around a huge tent, and it's just old-fashioned preaching. And uh, one of the guys that was uh, preaching with me in Kentucky a couple weeks ago got up and he gave testimony. He said, I've never been an outdoorsman. I've just never been an outdoorsman. He said, a lot of these guys, they come and they come with their four-wheelers and they sleep underneath the starry nights. Good for them. He said, some bring hammocks and they sleep in trees. Good for them. He said, some of them bring tents. He said, they sleep in tents. Good for them. He said, I always get a hotel room is what I do. And I, I thought, whoa. So now I just want to say, if, if you want to come camping with us and you need a hotel room, uh, there might be one available somewhere, or maybe you could rent a room for the night or whatever by one of the farmers in the area. I'm not really sure. But uh, try and come to the event. Try and come to the event. It's a wholesome event. The men and boys camp out and you would enjoy that. Take your Bible, please. Go to the book of Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. Many people look at Proverbs as being the book of wisdom. Now, they're not wrong for saying that. Book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. Uh, I'm going to speak on what type of friend are you? What type of friend are you? Book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. Let's all stand together for the reading of God's word. Here's what the Bible says. It's a very short verse, very noteworthy verse. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 17 and in verse 17, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Now, Father, we thank you for today. God, I pray that you would bless the message to come. Speak to our hearts and show us a truth that can help us, please. And uh, God, I pray that you'll do just that. Then, dear Lord, if there's somebody here today that knows not Christ as Savior, I pray that today would be the day that they would receive Christ, whether it's in one of the seven junior churches or Spanish department or special needs department or other departments we have meeting right now. Please, dear God, do that. Uh, then, Lord, if there's somebody online that's watching from our country or another that knows not Christ, may they listen purposefully and receive Christ as well. And, Lord, we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Be seated, if you will. This is the majestic praise. I appreciate these young people living for the Lord and caring for souls and loving to serve the Lord. Each one of them up here does all that and much more. And we are very, very proud of them this morning. And they'll sing. My Jesus knows when I am lonely. He knows each pain. He sees each fear. He understands each lonely heartache. Understands and always cares. My Jesus knows just what I need. Oh, yes, He knows just what I need. He satisfies and every need supplies. Yes, He knows just what I need. My Jesus knows when I Yes, he 
Now let's look back at that verse, if you will, as I speak this morning on what type of friend are you? What type of friend are you? Here's what it says in the book of Proverbs chapter 17 and in verse 17. Again, for reiteration's sake, it says, A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. You'll also find, if you will, an example of what it means to be a dear friend I mean, somebody that is knit to the heart in the example of Jonathan and David in your Bible. Over in 1 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, And it came to pass uh, when he had made, it says, an end of speaking unto Saul, listen to it now, that the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. The Bible says, And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. And so these were two gentlemen uh, that had a knit together, if you would please, a bonding together of friendship. Somebody said this, the only way to have a friend is to be a friend. Someone else said this, says a, a friend is one of the best things that you could ever have and the greatest thing you could ever be. Another person said, a godly friend will push you to love Christ more than you love anyone else. Another one said, true friendship is not uh, being that which is inseparable, uh, but being separated, nothing changes when it's true friendship. Someone said, uh, great friends are hard to find, difficult to leave, and impossible to forget. Someone said, true friends say good things about you behind your back and tell the truth to your face. Being honest uh, may not get you a lot of friends, another one said, but it will always get you the right friends. Another person said, a friend is one that knows you for who you are, understands you for who you are, and still loves you anyway. That's good. Amen. Good friends are like stars, another said. You can see them when you need to see in the darkest night. Amen. Someone else said true friendship is like a tree, not measured by how tall it is, uh, but yet its roots grow deeper every single year. Someone said friendship is not the only invaluable thing, but it is most valuable of all when you have one. Uh, happy is the man that has a friend. Happier is the man that is a friend. You know, when we think about friendship, of course, I go back to many things in my life coming up, being raised by my grandparents for six years, I could say they were friends. As I entered into uh, early childhood years, I remember friends in the neighborhood, farmer kids, if you will, that I played with in the fields where I grew up in the country. I remember uh, going now, of course, into high school. I had running friends and boxing friends. I was on the boxing team, and I was on track and field team. And I remember just the different ones, Donald Piercy and Fred Stein and Wade Wagner and different ones that was on those teams with me, and we were running buddies, or we were those that were heavily involved in athletics together. And by the way, when you're involved in things together, here's what it does. It brings you together. It builds common out. It builds that which is friendship. Remember David Lee and those that uh, had a part in me receiving Christ as they gave me the gospel of Christ in a carnival ground. Later on, they became my 
friends. When I went to Bible college, I remember the one by the name of Gary O'Neill. I'd go up to the weight room every Friday night. Uh, Fridays, I always fasted and prayed for my family to be saved, that they would receive Christ. And I did that until the day that they received Christ. But I remember uh, Gary O'Neill coming up during my college years, and he'd come up to the weight room that was on the fourth floor of the dormitory, and he'd come up there, and he'd sneak in at night, and he would bow down with me, and we would pray for my relatives to get saved. Can I say, that was a friend. Uh, I remember uh, Greg Adams and I would go and we'd preach at the juvenile detentional shelter on Saturday nights. Greg also helped me with the Bible clubs that I was over there for the church and for the college. I uh, cannot say because we labored together, he became just a good friend. I remember Joe Schrock, I never will forget. Uh, he was my bus driver. I was a bus captain for some time, first two years at Bible College, and uh, Joe had a little bit of money. I told Joe, I said, you got money, I got an idea. Let's start a window washing corporation. He said, what if it doesn't work? I said, no big deal. I lose a good idea. He said, yes, but I lose my money. But he said, let's do it. I think it's a good idea. I remember uh, by the time I graduated from college, I had 15 employees. Uh, we were doing uh, hundreds of different uh, storefronts and stuff like that. And then, of course, I signed it over to Joe as I left. But uh, you know what happened? Because we labored together, we became friends. You know, it's just something how friendship works. Uh, I, I remember, of course, uh, being able to uh, meet my dear wife in college, and she became my best friend. Friend, and uh, uh, we begin to date, and we begin to do ministry together, and uh, it, it was just absolutely phenomenal. And in all these years, almost forty years of marriage, can I tell you, it's just never changed. Uh, she's never been somebody that's pulled me down. I can thank God for that testimony. She's always been somebody to lift me and help me and support me. But you can ask for somebody better than that in a wife. And can I tell you, uh, she's always been my best friend. Uh, here's what we see. There's uh, Bible descriptions of how you can be the type of friend that you ought to be for someone else. Let's look at it this morning. Statement number one, the right friend helps your body, soul, and spirit. The right friend helps your body, soul, and spirit. Okay, so here's a friend. He said, well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's go work out together. Okay, well, that's a type of friend. Uh, here's another person says, well, here's what I want to do. Let's do this together. We'll go over, if you will, and we're going uh, to go to church together, and uh, we're going to go and we're going to sit together, and then uh, he doesn't uh, correspond with you, talk with you the rest of the week. You just meet here at church. Well, that's a certain type of a friend. Here's a person that helps your spirit to be right. That's a certain type of friend. But wouldn't it be good if somebody fulfilled the role of helping you in all of those areas? And so here's what we see. We see 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. The Bible says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, uh, which ye have of God, and you're not your own. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. For you're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, all right? So you are a soul that has a body. Uh, your soul is going to continue somewhere throughout all eternity. Uh, you know, the Bible says uh, to be absent from the body for the Christian is to be present with God the Lord. But you also read about the rich man that died. Rich man died apart from Christ. The Bible says took his last breath and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torment. So for the Christian when he dies goes to heaven. Uh, when that which is the lost person they die they go to hell. There's no in-between place. Well, I just think that I'll just go someplace and I'll be there uh, kind of floating around in the universe until God decides what to do with me. No, it's decided before you take your last breath. 
when a person receives Christ as Savior, God's, God writes their name in the Lamb's Book of Life, sealed onto the day of redemption. You can be sure that you'll be able to go to heaven, not because you're good, not because you've been baptized, not because you go to church, not because you keep the Ten Commandments, 15, 20, or 30, or 40, or hundreds of the commandments found in the Old and the New Testament. Uh, no, you go to heaven. Why? Because you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now, can I tell you, a person needs to understand their need of Christ. Yesterday, uh, we was out soul winning for about six hours or so, and we're knocking doors and talking to people about Christ and helping people to see their need of Christ. And you want to make sure somebody understands it. In other words, uh, it, it's not just a person that needs to have the lights on. Uh, somebody needs to have the lights on, and somebody needs to be home. I talked to a person yesterday. They had the lights on, but nobody was home. Went through. Uh, he was so excited. He, uh, he was coming up the steps. As he's coming up the steps, I said, hi. He said, hi. How are you? I said, I'm doing great. He said, I just wanted to see you. He didn't know me. Just wanted to see you today. Thank you for coming by. I said, well, I, I'm glad we could come by. He, he said, wow. He said, so what do you want? <laughs> I said, I'm here to invite you out to church, uh, hopefully to show you how to go to heaven. He had a cigarette. He's blowing smoke in my face. I said, look, do me a favor. Get rid of that. That way I can see you. He said, sure, sure, sure. So he threw it down. He said, I'm ready. I said, okay. So I took the Bible slowly, methodically, uh, went through the plan of salvation, showed him how to be saved. He said, oh, I want this. Oh, I want this. He said, I need this so bad. I want this. He said, I, I'd like to give you a hug. I said, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Let me complete what I'm trying to say. So I completed it, and you know, he, he prayed. But I, I think he was just agreeing with me all the way through. You ever have somebody that way? Yeah, I would say, you realize you're a sinner. Oh, I'm a bad sinner. And he's agreeing with me. You realize that a person needs Christ as their Savior. He's the Savior of the world. He could be your Savior. I want that. I want that. But it just seemed like it wasn't connecting. So how do you know? So I went through the plan of salvation. I, I said, would you like to pray and receive Christ? He said, oh, yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. I need Christ. But it seemed like he needed a lot of things. So I went through the plan of salvation. I did. This is what would happen. Went through the plan of salvation. I said, okay, so when you die, you're going to go to heaven or hell. Where are you going to go? He said, Moses. I said, what do you mean, Moses. He said, Moses. I said, no, no, no. Plan of salvation, eternal life, Christ, die, heaven, hell. What'd you just do? He said, I don't know. He's being honest. He, he just wasn't. You know, for a person to be saved, you need to understand the gospel. It's just not praying another prayer. It's just not putting Jesus on the shelf with a bunch of other gods like the Hindus do. No, no. It's Christ and Christ only. Uh, when a person receives Christ, and by the way, when a person receives Christ, he changes you from the inside out. Here's what happened. You know, when I got saved, he changed. How did he change me? I'm no longer going to hell. I'm going to go to heaven. And by the way, you can be excited about that or not. I know some people that's married, they're not excited about it doesn't change the fact that they are married. I, I know some people that are married and they're elated about it, excited about it. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that they're married. He hello? When I received Jesus Christ as my Savior, I'll just be honest, somebody showed me I was lost, somebody showed me I was a sinner, somebody showed me I need Christ as Savior, bowed my heart, didn't shed a tear. I didn't jump up and down, clip my heels together. You say, why? Probably would have broke my ankle. I didn't do that, though. I didn't run around the fairground saying, yes, I got it. I wasn't raised with a lot of emotions. 
We didn't have a lot of emotions that went on in our house. We're a pretty stable uh, household. It wasn't like this. It's just like this inside the house. So when I received Christ, understood I was a sinner. As a sinner, I was going to die, burn in hell, understood it, bowed my heart, asked the Savior of the world to come in my heart, forgive my sin, be my Savior, give me eternal life. God saved me, and I said, good. Good. I'm going to go to heaven. Now, some people get saved and they cry. You ever see that? I was talking to a man two weeks ago. I showed him how to be saved in his living room. He said, this is so good. He said, nobody's ever cared for me like this. Oh, this is so good. I said, good. You understand it? Yeah, I understand it. Thank you for coming by. Oh, oh. I mean, he's got crocodile tears coming down. He bowed his heart. He received Christ as Savior. You know, went to the door. He said, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Shook my hand, hands dripping full of... I said, I'm, I'm so glad I was able to help. I led a lady to Christ. I, I, was, I was preaching, I, I think it was in Colorado or someplace. I was preaching someplace, as, uh, uh, beautiful air, I do remember that. I remember looking outside, beautiful scenery. Walked outside, uh, there was a lady that was in the hallway getting ready to go clean the rooms. I said, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're going to clean the rooms. Thank you for cleaning my room. Thank you for taking care of me this week. By the way, here's how to have a clean heart. Gave her a gospel track. She said, I've never seen one of these before. She, broke, she, she spoke broken English, understood me well. I said, let me read it to you. I read it to her. Oh, within about 20 minutes, she bowed her heart. She received Christ as Savior. Uh, can I tell you, there's people all over the place. And, and by the way, she was just happy about it. She's happy about it. She's smiling. Every time I came down the hallway when I was preaching in that meeting, she'd smile and she'd, hey, thank you. Good to see you. God bless you. Thank you for sharing Christ. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying that here's a friend. A friend looks out for your body. Friend looks out for your soul. Friend looks out for your emotions. Now, can I say this? The Bible talks about here that that friend cares about the whole person. Let's take it and kind of break it down. Your body. Your body's important. Without it, you wouldn't be here today. It's important. It's important to uh, maybe work out some, whatever you need to do. Uh, lose weight. Gain weight. Stay with weight, whatever. But take care of some things concerning your body. A friend will help you with that. A friend will be somebody that will help you with your, your soul. What is the soul? It's comprised of three, mind, will, and emotions. So a friend will help you with your inner being. Uh, with your soul, you make your choices. With your soul, if you would please, you reason. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, that which is the heart, okay? Similar to that which is the soul. It's the place of reasoning. It's the place of direction. So they're going to help you. Uh, wait a minute, the soul is what? It's your emotions. It's your emotions. A person that's your friend's going to help you. They're going to say your emotions is offbeat. They're going to try and help you in areas like that. By the way, a friend will help you when nobody else will. A friend walks in when everybody else walks out. That's a friend. Romans chapter 6 and verse 6, the Bible says, knowing this, it says, Our old man is crucified with him. It says that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth ye should not serve sin. So here's a friend. What does a friend do? A friend would try to help you become spiritual. A friend would try to help you make spiritual decisions. A friend will be there to say, this is the direction that you ought to go. And they're going to try and help you to take the right direction. Now, wait a minute. Uh, you, you know, David, come here, if you will. So before you're saved, the Bible teaches this, that you're dead. Lay down. You're dead in trespasses and sin. You're dead. Trespasses and sin. That's how come when you come to church, preacher preaches, you don't understand it. The Bible is spiritually discerned, understood. So man of God gets up, pastor gets up, teacher gets up, 
Preacher gets up, he's preaching, and it, it's just like, okay, I don't get it. Why is he so excited about that? Because the Bible is spiritually understood, spiritually discerned. But when you get saved, here's what happens. Holy Spirit comes in and he quickens your spirit. He makes you alive. And so now when you come to church, it's not like you're dead in trespasses and sin. All of a sudden, word of God is taught. Word of God is preached. You might not express it outwardly. You might not be a shouter. You might never say amen. But inside of your heart, when all of a sudden the preacher is preaching, you identify with it. You say, that makes sense to me. That helps me. That uh, shows me a direction I need to go that I didn't know I needed to go before. That's why church is important. That's why having a good friend is important. Thank you. Be seated. Statement number one, I said this. The right type of friend helps your body, soul, and spirit. Statement number two, the right type of friend spends time with you. The right type of friend spends time with you. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24, the Bible says, a man that have friends must show himself friendly. So your friend is always going to be showing himself friendly to you. Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 19, the Bible says, uh, confidence it says, in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 17, the Bible says, iron sharpeneth iron. So it says, listen to it now, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of a friend. So the Bible teaches here that a friend is going to spend time with you. Wealthy businessman was on a trip one day, going on a business trip. He said to his 17-year-old son, you want to come? 17-year-old son said, yeah, I'd like to go. He wanted to spend time with his dad. Dad was a businessman, always busy. While on the business trip, the son said, hey, dad, when you get done, can we go fishing? That little pond outside of the hotel, a, a little ways down. Can we go fishing? He said, if I get time off. He got a phone call not long after that, said, tomorrow we're not meeting. Do whatever you want. The boy heard it. Said, Dad, you got tomorrow off. Can we go fishing? And the dad said, well, I, he said, Dad, you got tomorrow off. Can we go fishing? Uh, they went fishing. Inside the dad's journal, he wrote about that day. He said, wasted day. Inside the 17-year-old's journal, he wrote about that day. Best day of my life, I spent it with dad. Now, can I say this? Can I say that the right type of friend spends time with you? Spends time with you. Now, we think of just different ones that were great missionaries. We, we think of uh, Hudson Taylor. We think of just different ones that were great missionaries. Uh, we think of those that, if you would please, that went across the waters. They spent time uh, building things and helping things and uh, being able to direct different things. Uh, but here's what I find out. Uh, I find out in the ministry, I find out among pastors and whatnot. I find out among Christian school teachers. I find out among missionaries. I find out among businessmen. Uh, we can get so consumed that we just forget that we have children. I, I want you to think about this, if you will. Uh, the, the great missionary explorer, if you would please, as he was going over uh, to the, uh, trying to be able to be an explorer, trying to be able to do things that he wanted to do, you know, his son said this. He said, uh, Dad, I just want to spend time with you. It's time the Civil War. And all of a sudden, his, his dad said, no, no. He said, you know, it's just busy, busy, busy. So he went and he joined the army. That day, the meat wagon came in. He got, uh, he got arrested. He was in concentration camp, prison camp. He ran to get meat off the meat wagon. They shot him. He died. I think he's buried in Georgia. Uh, can I tell you that great missionary explorer to Africa, David Livingston. His son always wanted to be close to him, but a brother Livingston was just 
too busy. And his son thought, you know, if I could just take and help dad, you know, uh, you might know David Livingston as being uh, the, the great doctor or the great explorer, and he certainly was. But he was somebody that was trying to fr fr uh, free the slaves of Africa because the, uh, the, 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 the chiefs of those villages were selling their own people into bondage. So he fought for freedom. He fought for freedom. He fought for freedom. So his son said, you know, if I can't go with dad and do it here, I'll go over to the United States. I'll join the military. And he did. He thought he would get his dad's attention. He got killed. They found a little note that said this. I always tried to get close to my dad, but he never had time. Can I tell you, you've got to make time for people you care about. My dad worked at Maryland National Bank in Baltimore City. It's a 45 minute drive from our house down to Baltimore, where he worked at the Maryland National Bank. Every morning he'd get up, he'd drive down. Oftentimes, I'd drive down at noon just to buy him a cup of coffee. He liked Maxwell House coffee. By the way, he didn't get saved till later in life. But I'd drive down and I'd, I'd buy my dad some Maxwell House coffee just because he drank it, he liked it, just so I could spend time with him. Can I tell you, there's people in your family, you listen to me, that would just love to have your attention a little bit more. I think most parents that lose their children do it because they're too busy and they're just not trying to help their kids. By the way, you can get your kids, come here, Jared, you can get your kids involved. You can get them involved. Jared, our youngest son's married now. Hard to believe, easy to doubt. He's married now, got a beautiful wife, beautiful daughter, lives an hour away, Never misses church. Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday night, Wednesday night. Bus captain. Leaves about 6.30, 6 o'clock, I don't know. 5 o'clock, 4.30, I don't know. 2.30 in the morning, I don't know. Leaves early in the morning, drives in, goes out visiting, works, works in a secular field. All right, now, wait a minute. You can't tell me that me being a dad is not proud of a son like this. I'm proud of the other two. I'm proud of her daughter. But wait a minute. They need to know. Listen to me. Your children need to know that you're proud of them. Years ago, I decided, I, I decided this many years ago. I said, I will never hang up the phone without saying, I love you. Never will. Oh, you say, that's not a man thing. Your kids need to hear that. Your wife needs to hear that. Your husband needs to hear that. I, I'm saying this statement, number next, thank you, Jared. I said, number one, right type of friend helps your body, soul, and spirit. Statement number two, right type of friend spends time with you. Statement number three, the right type of friend promotes right things to you. So the right type of friend is going to promote the right things to you. They're going to do that. They're going to promote them in your life. They're going to help you. Okay? So when you take in, you're promoting the right thing. By the way, you promote them to your children, they grow up receiving them. Oh, and dad says, I don't want to go to church. <clears throat> I just don't want to go to church. You're going to reap that in your kids. You say, well, I don't agree with everything at the church. You don't even agree with everything that you see in the mirror when you look at it. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 25, the Bible says cold waters. It says for a thirsty soul. It says, let's do it now. It says as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. So what it, you know, a, a right type of friend is going to promote right things in your life. They're going to promote the right things in your life. The Bible talks about, here's a person, if you would please, has a thirsty soul. A thirsty soul. 
I believe everybody in here has a certain degree of thirst for God. You say, you really believe that? Why are you here? You're here this morning because there's a thirst for God somewhere in your life. You're not at a ball game. You're not drag racing down 635. You're not robbing a store. You'll probably do that at lunch, but you're not doing it right now. But you're here. Now, what does that show? That shows that there's a thirst. So I'm saying the right type of friend, what's he do? He promotes the right things. If you got a friend that's promoting you come to church, you got a, a dad, you got a mom, you got a, a brother, sister, aunt, uncle, grandfather, grandmother promoting you to come to church. Hey, that's right. That's good. It's better to come to church than not church. Lastly, let me give it to you, and my time is gone. I said, the right type of friend helps you with your body, soul, and spirit. I said, right type of friend spends time with you. I said, the right type of friend promotes right things in your life. Statement number next. The right type of friend, think about this, is there when you need them. They're there when you need them. Uh, by the way, they'll speak truth into you whether you want to hear it or not. Oftentimes when I sign, write somebody a letter, I write sincerely, comma, your grateful friend, Mike Wells. Because one thing I've learned, everybody needs a friend. Everybody does. Here's what the Bible says, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, we'll start where we finished. The Bible says a friend loveth at all times. The Bible says, and a brother is born for adversity. Born for adversity. Now, they're not standing there saying, I hope you go through adverse times because I'm going to help you. <laughs> they're not saying, hurry up. Go through adverse times. Get, get, you know, get mixed up and messed up and emotionally distraught because I'm here. They're not wanting you to go through that. But if you ever do, they're there for you. John chapter 15, verse 13, the Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. So, can I say this morning, the right type of friend is going to be there when you need them the most. By the way, the Bible says that Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer to a brother, if you will. Matter of fact, remember Lazarus? Remember Lazarus? Lazarus has now died. Jesus said, my friend. My friend. So he's going to be there for you through thick and thin. He'll, he'll be that friend. But you've got to understand who he is. He is just not a prophet. He's just not a man. He's the savior of the world. Amen. The Bible says, think about this. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. He that hath the Son hath everlasting life. So when a person receives Jesus Christ as Savior, when they ask Jesus to come into their heart, he brings, he gives everlasting life. Everlasting life's not in baptism, it's in a person. That person's Jesus Christ. So when I receive Jesus, I receive that which is everlasting life. It's not Jesus and being good, Jesus and being baptized, Jesus and going to church, it's Jesus Christ. And when I receive him, he gives me, and writes my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, sealed unto the day of redemption. Have you received him? Where are you going to go? Two places, not three. It's not heaven, hell, and Moses. It's either heaven or hell. When I receive him as Savior, I go to heaven. I go to heaven. If I never receive him, when I die, only other place you can go is that place called hell. I'm so glad Jesus loves me. I'm so glad Jesus loves you. I'm so glad that by receiving him as Savior, he gives us everlasting life.
He said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. Without Christ, I love you, but you're lost. You have to receive Christ to be saved. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, please. You say, preacher, I want you to pray for me. I don't know for sure. I don't know for sure. Listen to me now. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I want you to pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. But I'd really like to know that. I would really like to know that. Please pray for me. I'm not sure. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. I need Jesus Christ. I do as my Savior. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Would you raise your hand if that's you? God bless you. Thank you here. God bless you. Thank you here. Preacher, that's me also. God bless you. Thank you, my dear friend. Preacher, that's me also. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I truly need Christ. I don't want to leave this room. I don't want to leave this auditorium. I don't want to leave this sanctuary not knowing for sure, not knowing for sure that I can go to heaven. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. If that's you also, raise your hand. Would you do it? Would you do it? Raise your hand where I can see you. God bless you too. Thank you. God bless you also. Thank you. Pastor, that is me. I'm not sure I'm going to go to heaven. I need Christ. Please pray for me. Would you raise your hand also? Is that you? God bless you, dear lady. Thank you. Anybody else? Now, Father, you've seen the hands of precious people this morning, many, many adults, raising their hand, saying they need Christ. Just a little bit, uh, Father, I pray they'll come forward. Let us take a Bible and show them how they can know for sure that they need Christ and how they can receive Christ as Savior. Please do that. Please do that. Father, we thank you for it. Heads are still bowed. One last question. Say, preacher, I need to be the right type of friend for other people. I, I need to be the right type of friend for other people. That's my need. Please pray for me. If that's you, raise your hand. Would you do it? Okay, now, Father, you've seen their hands too. Help us to be the right type of friends for people that need a friend. God will thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. He begins to sing. God spoke to your heart. Would you come? Would you come right now? You raised your hand this morning. You said, I need Christ. Would you come? Would you come? We prayed for you. We love you. We're glad you're here. But you're going to have to take that step. Come, let us take a Bible, show you what the Bible says about going to heaven. Would you come and let us do that? Would you come and let us do that? We care about you. We love you. Glad you're here. We want to help you even further. You say, preacher, please pray for me. I did. I did. Now it's your turn. Would you come? Let us take a Bible and show you how to go to heaven. That's the most important thing you could do in your life. How to go to heaven. What about you? What about you? Maybe you're here this morning, my dear friend. You have not yet become that right type of friend. God wants to use you to be a friend in somebody else's life. Would you let God use you to be a friend? Would you do that? I was over in the gym. I was standing next to a pastor friend. A young man walked in. I went over to him, shook his hand. I said, man, you just look great. I am so glad you're here. Thank you for coming tonight. He started to walk away. Pastor spoke up. He says, hey, he says that to everyone. Well, if that's my testimony, I think I'll keep it. I think I'll keep it because everybody needs a friend everybody needs somebody that will believe in them help them push them a little bit to do what they're supposed to do 
May I say, what type of friend are you? What type of friend are you? Could you not be a better friend? Could you not let God use you to be a greater friend? God cares about you. Could you not let God use you to be a better friend? What about you? What about you? People still coming forward? People still walking the aisle? What about you? Good. Thank you. Be seated, if you will, please. And, and I appreciate you being here today. We have many people on the front row being dealt with about salvation. We thank the Lord for that. And uh, when we get ready to leave in just a little bit, we're going to ask you to stay away from the front rows, if you will, kind of exit out the auditorium that way. And that way these people can be dealt with. The Maskey family's with us today. They have a table set up out in the lobby area. Uh, when we get ready to dismiss, I'm going to ask that they go out and get by their table, and that way you can go by, shake their hand and stuff. The table is for eyes only, and so please be mindful about that. The stuff on the table costs them money, and uh, they use it as their display as they go around, so uh, don't pick up a, a something and say, that's neat, man, God bless them, and walk off. No, that's, that's for eyes only there, so... Please be mindful. They do have prayer cards out there, so if you'll pick up a prayer card, pray for them. I know that they would appreciate that so very, very much, and that would be most helpful. And this is uh, Cassie. Cassie, raise your hand. Where's Cassie at? She's already going back for baptism. You know, I appreciate her and her husband being here today. Husband's being dealt with about salvation. She had already formally received Christ as Savior, been praying about, I think, now for some time, Jared Wright, about being baptized. And Jared and Debbie's been working with them as a young couple. And, uh, and she came this morning professing Christ as her Savior, following the Lord in baptism. So we thank the Lord for that. And so we'll sing a song. I'll let them prepare. We always dismiss it quarter after. You don't need to be anxious. We get you out of here in time enough. You can beat everybody at the restaurant, so you're fine, okay? But let's sing at least one song together, and, uh, and then, of course, we'll watch a couple people be baptized if they get ready in time. If not, you can stay around afterwards and watch them be baptized. Let's sing a song. Turn your song book to page number 219, 219. We'll sing little as much when God is in it, page 219.
Uh, we're going to pray for Mrs. Hughes right now. Brother Hughes took her to the hospital having chest pains, and so we'll pray for her. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for Mrs. Hughes. We love the Hughes family. I pray you'll bless her as the doctors are giving her attention uh, to kind of find out what is happening there. And uh, Lord, help her to have her health restored. Well, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll sing one more song. We always dismiss it quarter after because we run transportation on the ground uh, with many of the buses uh, trying to help people. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll dismiss always at quarter after. So be mindful about that. So we'll sing one more song and we'll watch a baptism. If not, you can stay around. Oh, we have about four or five baptisms this morning. So please stay around and watch those if you can. Page number 231, we'll sing follow on. You may remain seated as we sing. Page 231, follow on. Stop by their table on the way out, shake their hands. 
let them know that we're honored to have them here this morning with us. Always great to have missionaries visiting with us. We love them. We support them, have for years, and a great, great missionary family. God bless you. Don't forget, tonight pre-services, 5 o'clock. So if you want to watch the choir practice, go to adult discipleship classes. We have teen classes upstairs, young fundamentalists, children's classes in the gym, Bible blazers. Then service begins tonight at 6 o'clock. And so if you could come, we'd love to have you back. Would enjoy seeing you tonight. Let's sing our way out. So sing the chorus, isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful?